Christmas series at the Pearlstone Center. We're located on 180 acres out in Reisterstown, Maryland on traditional Susquehanna and Piscataway lands. Today we're going to be learning how to make a shelter in case a disaster strikes you. And so, come on this way. So what we're going to need to start off our shelter, it's a simple one called a debris hut. You're going to need a long, thick stick called a ridge pole. Um, it's going to be a little longer than your hands going up to here. You're going to need two Y sticks about this long. And you're going to need some sort of stuff or rock or old uh, um, something that can uh, be on the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two Y sticks and we're going to take our ridge pole. We're going to raise it up there and then I am going to take I'm going to put the Y sticks up right here, and this looks like and voila. And you want the ridge pole uh, preferably a little higher, right up against your crotch. Um, you want it about that high, and um, and this is step one. Hi. Now we're ready for step two, and these are called the ribs. And so we're going to come over here to a nice pile of ribs that I already have here. And what I'm going to do is take some bigger logs like so and lean them up here. And this one you can see is too short, so it needs to come down um, where it can actually sit on the shelter. And these sticks can vary in thickness. This thick or this thick will be great. And we're going to start covering um, the shelter. I'm going to start by putting a few more of these over here. how this is going. If you want to okay, it. as you can see, the rib section is done. Um, one last thing that we did not talk about is you do want this shelter to be about this much longer than you. Um, now we're ready for stage three. And stage three is the most important stage that most people forget about, and it's called the lattice section. And the lattice section is the section that helps you keep all of your dead airspace and keep your heat in the debris hut. So coming forward, we're going to make some lattice. Lucky, we have lots of lattice nearby. And so lattice is going to look like this. We are going to take things with leaves on them or without, and we're going to start piling them on the shelter. So things like this that are very sticky are called lattice. We're going to come over here and grab some more and keep adding lattice to the shelter. Okay. That seems like a good amount of lattice. Now the next step where the debris hut really gets its name is leaves. And look at this right here. We have a big pile of leaves. We're going to take nice arm loads and we're going to take them and put them right on top. And as we're putting them on, we're not going to just put them on top. We're going to put them inside as well, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, so as we get getting the leaves piled up pretty high in debris, I'm going to take a little more debris and I'm going to throw it inside the shelter here. And as I'm piling up debris, it's not just leaves that I'm going to be adding inside or on top. I'm going to be adding logs like this. So I want to take whatever logs I can to help the leaves from getting blown off. I'm going to put them on here like so. Okay, so putting on the last of our sticks to hold down the insulation. 
But now we've got to work on the insulation inside the shelter. So when I'm sleeping in the winter time and I fill this with leaves, I'm going to push as many leaves in here as I can for insulation. I don't want more than an inch of dead airspace. And I want to be able to go as far in as I can. So, so this is how deep you want to be into your shelter so you can have a door that's very thick that'll keep you warm. All right, so I'm going to come out now. Pro tip, when you want to go in one of these shelters, it's probably best to tuck your shirts in before you go in. But the next thing that you want to do is you want to find some dry grasses if you can. Leaves will work, but having these grasses will make the shelter smell much nicer and be that much warmer and that much more comfortable. So what I'm going to do is put these grasses into kind of like a circle, like so, and I'm going to shove them inside this shelter. Okay, and at the end, it's gonna look like a nice rabbit hole. All right, this is the last step for a debris hut. Um, in a real life situation, you might wanna make a door that sticks out a little further, and maybe we'll show you how to do that later. But right now, you need some sort of thing for a doorway, and you could make a basket, or you could take off a shirt and stuff all these leaves into a shirt and pull it after you if you want to. I'm gonna show you just how to use a simple pile of leaves. It's not the best doorway, but this will help you. So I'm gonna put these right here. And I'm going to enter the shelter for the last time and go to bed. See you guys in the morning. Okay, once your shelter's done, it's good to know a few things about it. One, you want to make your shelter probably on the south or east side of a hill. You probably don't want it to be at the bottom of the hill, and you probably don't want it to be at the top of a hill. I've only had to use these once in my life. One time I decided to go backpacking to sit up on top of a mountain, and I decided I wasn't going to carry all my water to the top. Once I got to the very top, I could leave all my stuff there, and it's the top. I could find it. I also didn't bring a flashlight because who needs a flashlight in the middle of the night with no moon out in the mountains with bears? So I hiked all the way up to the top of the mountain, got to the very, very top on top of it um, in Ramsey's Draft, Virginia, put my backpack down, went back down the side of the mountain to collect water um, to spend a few days up there and found myself on the side of a mountain in the pitch black and found myself on a cliff face on a little ledge where water was coming out of the mountain. and. Uh, filled up those jugs. I never would have found it otherwise if I had had a flashlight. I would have had to go back down to the bottom, climb back up to the top of the mountain, and my backpack and tent were gone. And it was getting colder and colder. So in the pitch black, I had to make a shelter, a debris hut like this. I slept in the debris hut all night. I woke up with the dawn. And when I got up, my backpack and gear were 10 feet away from my shelter. <laughs> and But that night, the debris hut saved my life. I have many, many friends who have also survived in debris huts. Some of my friends were um, in the high peaks regions of the Adirondacks. They were on 16 to 30 feet of snow on hard packed snow, um, taking their ice axes and crampons, and they left their tents to go to a ridge maybe 100 yards away. They sat on top of that ridge to watch the sunset, and a whiteout snowstorm came in, and they were forced to go to the evergreens that were there and hack lots of the branches off the evergreens and make a little room on the top of the evergreen trees that were sticking out of the snow and with their warm gear, they were warmer in their evergreen debris hut than they would have been in their tents. 
So this is something that'll save your life if you need it. And if you don't need it, um, you can always practice by, if you're in a natural disaster and you're in your house, you can always practice by making blanket forts in your house and you'll make a similar type of shelter by using whatever blankets and pillows that you have. Um, One last thing, we have the Debris Hut Challenge at the Pearl Stone Center um, and at other wilderness schools. And that is any student from Forest School or Teul that wishes to make one of these shelters, makes one in their backyard and spends a whole night sleeping in it without sleeping in your sleeping bag. You can use the sleeping bag as your door, but you can't, if you go in your sleeping bag, you don't get the very prestigious brown bead that you get by spending a night in the debris hut without sleeping in your sleeping bag. So maybe have your friends over and build one in your backyard and then um, let us know and we'll give you your brown bead for spending a night in a debris hut. Bye.